Hello, algebra students, Mr. Lawrence here, and this is your first video of the school year. Please make sure you have your notebook handy and that you are uh, taking notes and writing down things as we go, pausing the video often. If you are sitting and watching this video the way you might watch a TV show, it will not benefit you. It is a waste of your time and a waste of my time. If you don't watch the video, you're going to be behind in instruction. Make sure you're interacting with it as much as possible. If I tell you to pause, you pause, you do what it asks you to do. If you need to pause or rewind at any time, you go ahead and do that. All right, so here's, here's how this is going to work. I'm going to go over a few different order of operation problems. <coughs> Excuse me. I'm going to let you try one and see if you get my answer. Okay, and if you do, awesome. If you don't, you know you're doing something wrong. See if you can figure it out. Come for help. Uh, you should be watching this on Tuesday. The next help session is Wednesday, and I've heard rumors of a quest, which is bigger than a quiz, smaller than a test, on Thursday. So you definitely want to be prepared. Some of you are going to be in for a rude awakening. We don't just show up and get an A because you're just so incredibly awesome. No, it's algebra. You have to work for it. Okay, so let me talk about this first one. Order of operations. Parentheses. I must do inside the parentheses first. So I come inside the parentheses, and it looks like I have to subtract in the numerator. And when I do that, I get 15 minus 13, which is 2. And then I'm going to subtract in the denominator, which is going to get me a negative 6. Okay, and then there's a square outside the quantity. But again, I'm going to do as much as I can in the numerator. Well, I've got 2 6, a negative 2 6. I'm going to simplify that fraction. I'm going to turn that into negative 1 3rd. Okay, now there's nothing else I can do inside the parentheses. I could turn it into a decimal, but that'd be a complete waste of time. I don't know why I want to do that. I'm going to deal with negative 1 3rd instead of dealing with negative 3 tenths repeating. I'm going to square it. So a negative times a negative, my answer is going to be a positive. 1 times 1 is 1. 3 times 3 is 9. The answer is 1 ninth. And there we go. Okay, you, at this point, you should go on to problem number 2 on your own. Pause the video, and when you're ready, you can unpause it to see my solution. Here comes my solution. If you have not tried it yet, you need to pause the video instead of just copying down my steps. All right, I'm going to subtract in the numerator. 5 minus 8 is negative 3. I'm going to subtract in the denominator. 10 minus 5 is 5. I get a negative 3 fifths. I'm going to square that. There's nothing to simplify. There's no common factor other than 1. 3 times 3 is 9. 5 times 5 is 25. The answer is 9 20 fifths. And it is a positive because when I multiply a negative 3 fifths by a negative 3 fifths, I get a positive. 9 25 so a negative times a negative is a positive okay here's problem three at least one person sent me an email about this and this was a conscientious kid who does their best all the time they're saying these kind of problems give them trouble well there's three sets of parentheses in this problem look I'll highlight them okay I'm sure you all see one set right here right and then there's a second set here. What you may not realize is that there is a third set right here. And we just use these brackets because it starts to get cumbersome with all the uh, different sets of parentheses. Hard to tell when one opens and closes. So this way we know. So we're still going to follow the order of operations. We're going to start inside. And inside here we have 12 minus 10, which is 2. And in here we have 24 divided by 8, which is 3. So now this problem is really 3 times the quantity of, and we would have 2 squared and minus the quantity of 3 squared. I guess I should have made that in blue, sorry. Okay, and then I have the closed quantity right there. Okay, so now I'm going to do this exponent. 2 squared is 4. 3 squared is 9. So now my problem looks like this. I should put an equal sign here. Somebody actually once told me on a problem that, that these equal signs are wrong. No, they're actually necessary, and a lot of people don't put them in because either they don't realize it or they're too lazy. We 
you need to show that this is equal to the next line and that's equal to the next line. So I'm going to have 3 times a quantity of 4 minus 9, right? And then using my order of operations, I will do 4 minus 9 and get negative 5. And then 3 times negative 5 is going to equal negative 15. And there you go. There's your, your answer. Okay, so again, we have problem number 4 here. I want you to pause it, try it on your own, and then come back and watch my solution. Okay, I'm getting ready to do my solution. If you have not tried it on your own yet, please do so now. Math is not a spectator sport where you can watch me and learn. Okay, 7 minus 5 is 2, so there's a 2 in there. This is going to be 20 minus 5, which is 15. And 15 divided by 3 is 5. So I really have 2 times a quantity of 2 squared minus quantity of 5 squared well, is the quantity. So now I'm going to have 2 times a quantity of 4 minus 25. Okay, and that would be 2 times negative 21, right? Which should equal a negative 42, and there you go. Okay, one more problem to go, and then this video is over. If you'd like to watch it again, I encourage you to do so. Watching them more than once, or part of them more than once, might help you understand why something is happening. I'm going to do this problem. I'm going to make a mistake during the problem. Your job when you come in tomorrow is to tell me what my mistake is. Okay? All right. So, first I'm going to have 6 divided by the quantity of, and let's see, in this quantity that's going to turn to negative 4, but then when I square it, I'm going to get a positive 16 minus, this is going to turn into 2, and 2 to the 4th I think is 16. Okay, and then a positive 3. And so I'm going to have 6 divided by quantity of 0 plus 3. And so I am going to do my division next, which is going to be 0 plus 3. I should really have equal signs in here all the way. And then 0 plus 3 is 3. Okay, this is not the correct answer. See if you can come up with the correct answer without using a calculator, without asking people. See if you can figure out what my mistake was. All right, that's it for the video. Hopefully you've taken good notes. Again, if you need to watch part of it again, please do so. Even if you need to watch the whole part, take notes. If you want to ask me why I did something, no problem. You'll be able to do that Wednesday. And if there's time left in the class, you should start the homework. All right, Mr. Lawrence, signing off. Have a good night, everybody.